What's going on guys? GeoSnow right here. So in today's video we're going to discuss about the reason there is no iOS 10.3.3 or even iOS 10.3.2 and 10.3.1 jailbreak available despite the fact that there are a lot of exploits available in the wild that can be used and you know a lot of presentations being made about them and how they work and stuff like that. And uh, I get these questions a lot. Man, why there is no 10.3.3 jailbreak if Ziv exploit or extra recipe exploit or uh, triple fetch exploit are available and there is now the Wi-Fi exploit that is also available and there, there is absolutely no jailbreak. Why? Why we stopped at iOS 10.2 and now 10.2.1 but iOS 10.2.1 jailbreak is definitely unstable for the moment. I'm going to explain these for those of you who do not know the reason and uh, I'm going to try to make it simple. By the way, some of my viewers may possibly know uh, this information. So uh, for those of you who do know that, that's good for you. Th it, this means you are very well informed about the situation of the jailbreak community, but there are people that simply want to jailbreak and they do not understand why they can't do it at that point point in time. What stops the developers from simply hacking iOS 10.3.3, for example? So let me explain in depth for those of you who need that. There are a couple exploits. That's right. Ziva exploit, which is Imperium's iOS video and audio kernel exploit, um, is available, which has been published on August 23rd. So why people do not use it? Well, they do. They do use this exploit. But you know, something you need to keep in mind is that every exploit has a specific version or a range of versions that is compatible too. And Ziva exploit is compatible with iOS 10.3.1 or earlier. The reason for that is that companies that do publish these exploits, for example, Zimperium in this uh, case, at first report the you know vulnerability to Apple. Apple patches the uh, vulnerability, releases a patched version of iOS, for example, iOS 10.3.1 point two in this case and then uh, the company that discovered the vulnerability is able to publish you know to um, to make it public uh, and um, at the time they do make their exploit public, it's already patched in the newest version. So this means that you can no longer use it with the latest version. The signing window for the version compatible with it might still be signed at the point in time when uh, the company that discovered the exploit publishes it, but it's very unlikely. If it is, you can go ahead um, and downgrade, but a lot of people do not know uh, that it's very important to stay on the lowest version possible. Updating only makes matters worse. The more you update, the more vulnerabilities are patched and by the time they are released, you're already on a firmware that is not supported. So that's the reason Ziva, which is a very popular um, kernel exploit for iOS, released recently in August, isn't used in iOS 10.3.3 jailbreak because it's not compatible. It's been patched in iOS 10.3.2. So this is usable for an iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak and I'm pretty sure it will be used in an iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak. There are already projects working on that, but do not expect this to be included in 10.3.2 or 10.3.3. Let's move on to the next um, exploit, which is pretty much this one in here. Uh, published by Google Project Zero, and um, you can see it in here is the triple fetch. Now, triple fetch has been uh, a very powerful exploit, and it's been reported by um, Ian Beer of Google Project Zero somewhere in April. Now, uh, this exploit is also, as I said, very powerful, and it's part of the Saigon jailbreak. You, you can see in here, Saigon jailbreak has been created like two weeks ago, and it's a work in progress, but it does work on select number of devices, and it's the um, iOS 10.2.1 jailbreak, and it might have support for iOS 10.3.1 on specific devices in the future. So definitely an interesting project. Do you know what Saigon actually is? Well, it's a combination between three different exploits from two different sources, and that is triple fetch, Ziva, and extra recipe. How can they achieve that on iOS 10.2.1, but they cannot do it on 10.3.2 or 10.3.3, you might ask. Well, it happened that for iOS 10.2.1, all these exploits, triple fetch, Ziva, and extra recipe are compatible. 
Add to that the fact that the KPP bypass from Luca Tedesco from back on Yalu for iOS 10.2 is compatible with 10.2.1 and you have pretty much the entire recipe for a jailbreak, you just have to put it together, fix bugs, and that's it. But everything is on the table. Unfortunately, for 10.3.3 and 10.3.2, most of these exploits in here used are not compatible. If you take a look, we have triple fetch, Ziva, and extra recipe. We already ruled out the Ziva exploit, which is compatible with iOS 10.3.1 or earlier, so no 10.3.3. Going ahead in here, we have the triple fetch. Well, let's see when it's been patched. The easiest way to check when a vulnerability has been patched is to take the CVE number in here, Google it, go to the common vulnerabilities and exposures, and you can see that this CVE in here says, quote, an issue was discovered in certain Apple products, iOS before 10.3.3 is affected. So this specific exploit is compatible with iOS 10.3.2 and lower. This means that it can be used for an iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak, for an iOS 10.3.2 jailbreak, for 10.2.1 jailbreak, but not for 10.3.3 since it's been patched right on that specific version. So this one is ruled out for 10.3.3, but it might come in handy for those on 10.3.2. You can see now why it's important not to update to the latest version. Now let's move on to the last exploit that is being um, you know, mentioned in here, the extra recipe. Going ahead, it's coming from the same Google Project Zero and from the same Iron Beer. So yeah, this has been posted on November 23rd, 2016. This is almost one year old. Let's see which firmers are affected. Again, Google the CVE number in here if you are in dubbed. And if you take a look, it says that uh, an issue was discovered in certain Apple products iOS before 10.2.1 is affected. So in this case, not even iOS 10.2.1 would work with this exploit. I think it has been used successfully in the uh, early iOS 10.1.1 uh, or iOS 10.2 jailbreak. Don't quote me on this, but um, it cannot be used in iOS 10.2.1. It cannot be used in 10.3.3, 10.3, 10.3.2 and so on. So at this point, it's pretty much useless so we can simply not consider it for any jailbreak. Yes, it was a powerful one. The extra recipe was very, very powerful and um, you can still find, you know, a lot of documentation in here. It can be adapted for one thing and another and stuff like that. Uh, I think Xerob has used it and, uh, you know, he created a KPP less branch successfully, but it's not usable on 10.3.3 or 10.3.2 and not even on 10.3.1. And these three firmers are pretty much the um, most used firmers amongst people waiting for a jailbreak currently. So see, this is why it's important to not update. There is actually an exploit that is usable on iOS 10.3.3 and this is pretty much the only uh, exploit available currently, you know, for the general public that is compatible. But it's not, um, you know, your typical exploit that you get from the Google Project Zero. It's still published by the Project Zero, but this one is a Wi-Fi exploit. And although it can be used for a jailbreak, it's definitely usable for that. And uh, according to Saigusa, it can be used even for an untether at some point. Uh, you know, it would take a lot of work, but it's usable. It's only one exploit. And as you can see from most of the jailbreaks, including from Saigon, you usually need a chain of exploits. You, you need more than one exploit. And you can see here we have triple fetch, we have Ziva, we have extra recipe, and they also use the KPP bypass from uh, the um, iOS 10.2 jailbreak, which is still compatible with 10.2.1. So there are a lot of things going on in here. And this is the reason there is currently no jailbreak available. There are not enough exploits available in order to build one. There are developers trying to find iOS 10.3.3 vulnerabilities, but most of them are sending to Apple first. And once Apple has patched something that might affect the iOS 11 in any ways, 
uh, they will probably publish you know a white paper about that exploit and again this is the reason you stay on a lower firmware and you do not update if you really want to jailbreak in the future and not to wait like a thousand years for a jailbreak the best advice i can give you is stay on the lowest firmware possible as it's more vulnerable of course this has drawbacks and that is the security fact in here but if you really want to jailbreak do not update to 10.3.3 or to ios 11 and stuff like that that's the uh, the reason here so i really hope i made things clear uh, i really hope i uh, catched all the reasons there aren't any jailbreaks currently of course even if you have the exploits, even if you have the vulnerabilities and white papers, you still need developers to develop that jailbreak, to put the things together. And this is something that we rarely get nowadays, and that's unfortunate. But again, this is one of the reasons we do not have a jailbreak for the 10.3.3. And it might take a while for such thing to appear. So do not update your device saying, yeah, I, I lost my hope, I'm updating to iOS 11. You only do yourself a bad thing, because when a jailbreak will appear at some point you will say humph I should have stayed on iOS 10.3.3 or 10.3.2 so do not update resist without updating at some point the situation may shift exploits are published almost monthly so you do not know when something compatible with your device is released in the wild that's pretty much it guys I really hope I made things clear till the next time I'm GSNow subscribe to stay updated for more jailbreak news and tips Peace out.